Howdy students. Uh, today I want to go over learner differences with you. This is something that is the third column of your lesson plans uh, using the SU lesson plan template. And a lot of students really struggle to wrap their hands or heads around what needs to be in this column, what should I be thinking about, what should it look like, etc. So I, I'm just creating this short video to kind of walk you through that and to give you a, a few ideas. So first, we have to consider what does it mean learner differences. We've actually talked this in the past. We we talked about this being contextual factors. And as you research different uh, school districts or individual schools or even the students within the within those schools, you find that there are certain things that make it more difficult for certain students to learn. It might be something like English as a second language. If they have that challenge, it's gonna be harder to learn. And there will be certain strategies that can help accommodate those students. It might be that they have ADHD or other uh, learning disabilities, and, and those will be unique situations. It might simply be that they're disengaged students. Uh, maybe they have social anxiety, maybe they have uh, difficulty in the classroom because they're they're shy or maybe the opposite end of that. Maybe they're just disruptive and have a hard time settling down. So these are all different learner differences and things that we want to consider as we look at creating a lesson plan. Now, we're going to look at factors that differentiate learners um, and their environments. We're going to look at things that keep students from being engaged. And so really, if you think about it, uh, universal design will accommodate most of these things. So if you write a good lesson in the first place, you're not going to have to make specific little things to accommodate each individual learner because all your students will be engaged because you have the right kind of activities. But there are some uh, special instances where we want to accommodate specific learners within our classroom. So on the SUU lesson plan template, in the third column, it says meet learner differences. And then the two prompts there are identify evidence-based practices to meet specific uh, individual or group learner needs and consider the content, the process, the product, and or the environment. Now, I asked some of my face-to-face -face students if they would be willing to share um, some examples from the lesson plans they did as we worked together in class. And I have a few really great ones. So let's start first with uh, the beginning of a lesson. In this instance, we look at the action steps here at the top, um, select a clips from a movie, and uh, actually from a couple of movies. So they're watching a movie, and then, the learner differences in the third column, uh, they've identified student one. So uh, a hypothetical student in this class that might be an ESL student or an ELL student. Um, these students can be given the option of having their own vocab and grammar sheet next to that, out next to them with a reduction from their assessment. Um, so there's a few options here, right? You might not have any reduction in assessment. You might have a cheat sheet that's available to everyone. If you want to have your cheat sheet out, um, that's going to help you with the vocabulary or grammar. But we're looking specifically at students who might, who might be struggling if they watch this video clip to have some resources available to them. So that's one thought. Um, in the middle of a lesson, another student talked about doing a slideshow uh, where uh, they're looking at different materials to build something, and we're asking questions about how to build these objects and have some details there. Now, for the learners here that are under consideration, if we look at students B and C, these are students who are often distracted. And so uh, here she says, I'll tell all the students to get a piece of paper out and draw something that relates to the lesson. Now, of course, this could be something with universal design that we make available to all students. And so if that was the case, we would move that over into the action steps and we wouldn't need it here in the third column. But this, if this is a specific accommodation for just these two students, then we leave it here. Uh, student D, who's learning English, doesn't understand bigger words. So um, we'll make sure to explain the new vocabulary words and show pictures. So that might be an additional resource. Uh, and then there's some other information here. Finally, um, with an assessment at the end of class, another student came up with this idea where they're going to be splitting into groups um, and doing presentations, except um, they identified that one of the learner differences here is some students with anxiety might not feel comfortable presenting. So to make this less stressful, they're going to split uh, students into groups 
rather than having it do them on their own. Again, this is kind of a universal design principle. And so it could just be included over here in the first column. Um, or if you're going to do that just for a few specific students, then you'd leave it here in the third column. Presenting and explaining the model to peers might be anxiety inducing. So letting students have a paper with frequently asked questions and notes, and then students with an IEP could have an assessment modified. And that's where really this last one, we definitely would want in the third column. So students with an IEP would have a modified assessment and we could add a few more details on how that would be modified, but simply saying they have the modified assessment is probably good enough. These other two, if, if you're gonna make this available to the whole class, just include that in the action steps and then you don't need that in the third column. Again, part of the reason we have these lesson plan templates is so that teachers, whether it be a substitute or the traditional classroom teacher can quickly look at it and be like, all right, here's what's next. Here's what I'm gonna do for these students. And so you want to be able to identify the specific things that you're gonna to do to help individual learners within your classroom. Well, I hope, I, I think these are some great examples. I hope this gives you some ideas for how you can utilize that learner differences column on your SEU template. Um, we really want you thinking about this now so that when you get into the classroom full time, this is second nature that you're always thinking about, how can I help students who are disengaged? How can I help students who are struggling with communication? How can I help students who have behavior issues? And by thinking about this third column now, it's gonna help you come up with some strategies that you can utilize later on. All right, thanks, bye-bye.